Go away, I'm playing the game. No, you're already mic'd up to film. Go away. Fine. <sighs> Let's get this out of the way before we get started. Yes. This is the best Spider-Man game ever made. There's the obvious stuff like beautiful graphics, pitch perfect web swinging, tense combat, fun side missions, all coming together to make the perfect Spider-Man experience. But it's not just the gameplay that makes this the perfect Spider-Man experience. While that helps, to me, the real reason why this is the best Spider-Man game ever made is because of how it handles Peter Parker. Spoilers from here on out. Perhaps more than any other comic book superhero, the life of Spider-Man is so intertwined with that of his alter ego that to tell a story focusing on one life and not the other feels disingenuous to the character. I'm not saying it can't be done. There have been countless stories that are just about Spider-Man doing Spider-Man things and even some stories about Peter Parker doing Peter Parker things. But ultimately, no matter what, everything Spider-Man does directly affects Peter Parker and vice versa. This is different from, let's say, Superman, who never really gets his alter ego in trouble. At worst, Clark Kent will just duck out of work early to go do Superman stuff. No harm, no foul. If Spider-Man did that, there would be hell to pay. Countless stories have been told of Peter Parker's personal life being directly affected in the negative because of something he did as Spider-Man. And on the flip side of that, we've seen how Peter Parker's life affects how he acts as Spider-Man. Sometimes he acts more cautious, sometimes he just straight up quits before realizing that's easier said than done. In previous Spider-Man games, Spider-Man had always been the main focus rather than Peter Parker. I mean, this just makes sense. He's the one with the outlandish costumes and the great big adventures. And for the most part, that's fine. A lot of these games were fun to play with good to great web swinging and visceral combat. But Peter Parker was never a main focus. If he did appear, it was usually just in cutscenes setting up the next scenario for the player to encounter. Now, to be fair, there aren't really that many superhero games that let you play as the secret identity. There was a Hulk game in 2003 that let you play as Bruce Banner during some half-baked stealth missions, and Telltale's Batman series is famous for focusing just as much on Bruce Wayne as they do on Batman, maybe even more so on Bruce Wayne, but we'll get back to the Telltale games in a minute. But when it comes to Spider-Man, his secret identity is so important, so integral to the overall mythology that to not include it or to downplay it in any way lessens the experience overall. But Spider-Man 2018 is all about the relationship between Spider-Man and Peter Parker and how one directly affects the other. Sure, the game has Peter appear in cutscenes to set up the next mission for the player, but the game goes one step further by having Peter interact with characters like Mary Jane, Aunt May, and Dr. Octavius in full, real-style conversations. Most games don't really like to show us any more than what's needed to advance its own story forward. Here, by slowing things down just a little bit, we get a peek into Peter's life and how his alter ego is not only affecting him, but those around him, those closest to him. There are scenes of Peter and Mary Jane just hanging out. Sure, they're talking about important plot details, but they're filled with all these little touches and great performances that it really makes you feel like you're experiencing an important part of Spider-Man and Peter Parker's life. You don't think this has anything to do with Lee, do you? Sorry to cook and run. Did, did you just leave your clothes on the kitchen floor? Uh... Where do you want me to, uh... Just a couch is fine. <laughs> See you later? Yeah. Also, you get to actually play as Peter Parker in this game. Sure, you don't do anything crazy, like swing from buildings and punch bad guys, but just the fact that you can explore Doc Ock's lab as Peter, or Aunt May's feast shelter as Peter, and solve simple puzzles and advance the story forward is significant. It shows that this is as much a Peter Parker game as it is a Spider-Man game. 
There's also one more thing that makes this game the ultimate Peter Parker slash Spider-Man experience, and I didn't realize it until I heard one line from one of Dr. Octopus's audio logs. I honestly never thought we'd get the tensile actuator back to an acceptable tolerance, but Parker, the boy has an eye for guerrilla science like none other. This line really hit me because it reminded me of something that often gets overlooked when Spider-Man gets adapted into another media, especially with video games. Peter Parker is a genius, one of the smartest people in the Marvel Universe. In addition to his spider powers, he often has to use his intellect in order to help him fight crime. And this game showcases his intellect by not just having him work with Dr. Octavius in the beginning of the game, but also when it comes to his gear too. This is one of the only Spider-Man games, at least one of the only ones that I can think of, to really focus on his gadgets other than his web shooters. His ability to create new technologies to help him really adds a new interesting dimension to the gameplay. One of the reasons why people were upset with the organic web shooters of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies was because it downplayed his scientific creativity. He wasn't able to create the web shooters, it was just given to him. He wasn't able to show off his abilities. Hell, my only real problem with the MCU Spider-Man was that he didn't create the suit, somebody else did. He wasn't able to use his skills to help him be a better Spider-Man. But this game really drives home that fact. From the opening cutscene, we can see his workbench where he's fixing up his web shooters, working on his mask, it even looks like he modified his own toaster. The only other games that I can think of that try to do the superhero and alter ego dichotomy like Spider-Man are the Telltale Batman games. And while I really like those games, I don't necessarily think the definitive Batman experience, or even the definitive Bruce Wayne experience. It's nice to shine a light on the Bruce Wayne aspect of Batman, but traditionally, the actions of one don't really affect the actions of the other. It often doesn't matter what Bruce Wayne or Batman does, because in the end, both aspects of the character want the same thing, and they both work towards the same exact goal. That's not always true with Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And while this game doesn't go full telltale with decision trees and whatnot, the story it's telling and the way it tells its story through gameplay really highlights the Spider-Man-Peter Parker relationship like never before in this medium. And that, friends, is my long-winded way of saying that this is the best Spider-Man game ever made. Sure, the graphics and the gameplay and whatnot help, but again, it's the story, the Peter Parker-Spider-Man story that really sells it for me. Also, you can give people gun fingers as you walk down the street. What do you all think about Spider-Man on PS4? Do you agree that it is also the ultimate Peter Parker experience? Or do you think I'm just rambling like a madman? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. If I do have one real complaint about this game, I did experience a lot of graphical glitches during some of the more serious cutscenes, and it really undercut the drama of the storytelling. But other than that, 10 out of 10, IGN.com. Of course, don't forget to check out Wolf Den Apparel where you can get some really nice shirts and the best hat ever seen on YouTube. And as always, we have new videos every single Tuesday, Wednesday, and Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that. Like this video and share it with a friend, a friend who really likes the story of Spider-Man on PS4, but doesn't really know why. Show them this video and I think then they will understand. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.